<clears throat> we're continuing with the um, speech that the Lubavitcher Rebbe gave in 1991 about this week's Torah portion called uh, Shalach. And in it, he explains the, um, the difference between the spies that Moses sent and the spies that Joshua sent. <clears throat> and if you remember that Moses, right in the beginning, right, this is what this Torah portion is. This is like one year after they got out of Egypt. So the Jews were about to enter into the land of Israel and they wanted Moses to send scouts and Moses did. And the Rebbe explains that these scouts were there, were sent out only to boost the morale of the Jewish people. The morale was already high, but they wanted to be higher, to come back with a good report, how wonderful and glowing and, and, and prosperous, beautiful the land of Israel was, and it's going to be their land, and they're going to receive it. And um, th th by means of that, the Jewish people would be more enthusiastic. That's all just to increase their enthusiasm. The spies that Joshua sent in were sent in for a totally different purpose, to, to, to conquer the land, to scout out the land, to find out what the morale is of the people, <clears throat> and so that the Jews would conquer the land, war. Or in simple language, Moses sent in the 12 scouts for peaceful purposes. And Joshua sent his two scouts in for belligerent purposes. The Jewish people were sure, no doubt, that they were going to be able to conquer the land of Israel. God was with them. And so they were sure they just had to, they had to good, get a good report. And it'll make them more sure. Not, not only to be certain they're going to conquer the land, but to be happy. They're going happy. That was Moses' thing. Peaceful purposes which is not the case with Joshua. <clears throat> Joshua, he, th this is already almost 40 years after the debacle with Moses and the people didn't want to go in. And they knew now it was going to be trouble. So Joshua sent in two spies in order to find out how much trouble is going to be. And the more, and, he, and the Rebbe listed a, a lot of differences between the spies of Moses, which were, in addition to the number, 12 spies of Moses and the, <clears throat> and the two spies of Joshua. <clears throat> and mainly, the, 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 the main differences was that Moses sent in the spies, how do you say, in an advertised way, in public, and Joshua sent them in private. And the spies of Joshua had to hide themselves all the time. And they only stayed a very short time. They didn't see much of the land of Israel, spies of Joshua. The spies of, of Moses, they wandered around in Israel for 40 days. And they didn't hide themselves at all. And they, 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 they surveyed the whole entire land of Israel. <clears throat> Okay, so that's the big difference between them, says the Rebbe, but nevertheless, we still have a big wonder over here. How did such a terrible thing result? How does this terrible result come from these scouts that Moses sent? I mean, he sent people that he choose, chose them himself. Moses was never wrong. He knew these people. The, the Torah testifies that the people that Moses sent in were holy people, great people, well-known people, trusted people, loyal, brave. The Torah testifies to this. How could it be that they made such a big mistake? So here we go. Al Pizah, according to this, we have a general question about these spies. And we're going to see what this has to do with us. Very, very deep message from this. Mavur, it's explained in many places <clears throat> about how high these and, and perfect these people were, these scouts. It says, Kulam Anashim, Lashem Cheshivas, they were all important, they were all <clears throat> Kesherim. 
all of them were loyal and, and, and fit for the job. They were the heads of thousands. They were chosen from all the rest of the Jewish people. <clears throat> They were in such a tremendously high and how do you say the, 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 uh, efficient level that they were trained, they were the best. So what do we say? that What, what became their sin? According to what we said over here, the sin was not that they were afraid. They just didn't want to go down into the physical world and do commandments in the physical world. They wanted to stay in the desert and have as little contact with physicality, with the mundane as possible. There was Because they were such a high level, so they didn't want to come down and into the drawdown godliness in the world. They wanted to be in the desert. Why? Because they were so high and holy. In the, the desert, they could learn Torah all the time. They didn't have to deal with anything in the world. They didn't have to plant. So much. After the sin, after they sinned, God got all angry at them. There's a place where it says that they don't have a place in the world to come. Why? Because it explains that they were higher than the world to come. Their level, what does it say? That says the Megillah Amukos. There's a, a sefer called the Megillah Amukos. It's explained other places. It says, what does it mean? It says that they were, they don't have a place in the world to come because they were so holy. Something like none of an view. Remember none of an view. It says Moses said that these are tremendous. The, the holy temple was sanctified by them because they were so holy that they didn't care about the physical world. Not of an view. It was a mistake, but it was a very, very holy mistake. Right? That their motivations were the highest of the high. It says even heaven wasn't a big enough reward for them. They have been If so, so the question is very big. Because of this highness of these spies, how could it be that in fact that everything came out bad? Their motivations were the best and they were the best. <clears throat> and their deeds, they thought they were doing the best thing, and they had all sorts of excuses. And even afterwards, it says that God did not come harshly on them, that they had a, their reward was so great, it wasn't even in heaven. They couldn't. But nevertheless, it came out a terrible thing. They were supposed to go into the land of Israel immediately. And God got angry at them, and Moses got angry at them. How does such a bad thing come out from such good motivations and such amazingly pure people? Says the Rebbe, Yesh Lomar, we can say, according to what we said before, that in fact, really something good came out of it. The fact is that something really good came out of these spies, scouts. What, what, could have, what good came out? Because because when they came back to the Jewish people and they said, Bano el Eretz asher shalachtanu, we came back from the land to which we were sent. But they came back 40 days, they were in Israel, scouted around, they came back, and they said, Begam zavat chalavi. says the land of Israel is flowing milk and honey. It's a land of plenty, or like we learned in Lukuti Torah, it means it's a place where it's, it's zavat chalavi, the vash, it's a place where it's the, the kindness of God and the awesomeness of God is revealed. And they showed the big fruits. As Yadu called in Israel, so if so, the Jewish people knew clearly, and without any doubt, not just in a way that they believed, Tova Mamaila the how good the land is. True, they opted out to say, listen, but we, we want to stay in the desert. Right? They all peer pressure, and who knows what there was, but they said, we don't want to go in. Not because it was bad, but because they thought that the land, that staying in the desert was better. But they found out that the land of Israel was even better than what they thought. They, 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 but still, it wasn't, in their eyes, it wasn't as good as staying in the desert. God would fight their battles in, in Israel, but still, why have battles at all? Let's stand in the, in the desert. 
<clears throat> I mean, listen, you could say, like I said before, they, it was pretty obvious that God did not want them, did not want them to go into the land of Israel. Why? Because if he wanted them to go into Israel, then he would just stop giving them manna in the desert. He would just stop giving them water. He would start limiting the supply. Every day there would be a little bit less mana, a little bit less water. God could do it in a way that he would. He could even more. He could take the clouds that surrounded them. They could only go where the clouds went. Take the clouds, move them into Israel. The Jewish people would be forced to go into Israel. So obviously God wanted them to stay in the desert. Right? This is wrong. He didn't. He wanted them to make a decision on their own that they were going to the land of Israel. And so the Jewish people said, listen, the land of Israel, we realize now it's better than what we thought. It's got tremendous fruits. It's a beautiful land, flowing milk and honey. But listen, you know, why leave? A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Huh? A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. We, we here we're sitting in the desert. Everything is certain. God is protecting us. So okay, let's say the land of Israel is better. Well, who needs it? Right? Who, who knows if we're going to get all that good? Here what's good, we know it's, it's certain. We have our super holy comfort zone in the desert. But the fact is, is that the spies did let them know the good of the land of Israel. The idea is in this knowledge, and it had an effect. After a certain amount of time, after 40 years, this, the, these people passed it on to their children, the greatness of the land of Israel. And also those people that were under the age of 20. The people that were only the only people died in, in the de desert were people that were 20 years old and up. As soon as they reached 60, they died. But people that were under 20, they lived. They continued. So they heard the spies saying that the land of Israel was good, the scouts. And they and they saw that it really was a good land. They understood that they were talking to people that had seen the land. This had an effect on them. That after 40 years, when they went in with Yeshua. They would go with a tremendous joy and a tremendous desire. Why? Because of the words that the scouts that Moses sent in previously. In a deeper way, according to Pnim Yotanyan, if you want to look at the spiritual side of it, <clears throat> that when Moses sent these spies, Latour at the Oritz, to scout out the land of Israel, Paulo in Gadol, it, it made a big change in the world. Not only the one we just spoke about psychologically after a while, but also immediately. What? Like Rashi says, Oto that at that time when Moses sent them, they, they were good, they were excellent, they were good emissaries. These were actually the first Jews that entered the land of Israel. Huh? These were the first of, of, I mean, of course, you know, Abraham was there and Yitzchak never left. But we're talking about the whole Jewish people, the promised land, they were the first ones to fulfill this promise. The spies that Moses sent. True, they didn't stay there that long, only 40 days. And true, they convinced everybody else not to go in. But the fact of the matter is, is that they did go in. Kibush B'Kanis, the Oritz, by means of the Jewish people. These scouts that Moses sent in, as unsuccessful as the was in the end, but the fact is, is they were the first Jews from Am Yisrael to set foot in the land of Israel. They they broke through. They broke through. Yesh if we can even add on, Ulaham in the Kibush Knisa Oretz, this whole idea of conquering and entering the land of Israel, Ubafran, and especially sending these scouts mudgash from this is underlined ha'inyan the bureau of refining this physical world inyan zem mudgash biyoter baliyah besimcha bechetetz gadol katotza mishlechot samaragli amosha what happened 40 years later when the Jews entered the land of Israel with Joshua because in the merit of the news that they got 40 years earlier from these spies, the scouts of Moses. They saw the good of the land with their own physical eyes. 
true when this when the scouts came back, they dissuaded the Jews from going in. But the good news that they brought, it lasted. And it came down this joy, not just because of the faith of God. God. Moses said, I told you, but because the actually physical world itself testified, the physical world itself testified that God's promise and God's words were true. Yesh Loma, we can also say that this is also hinted at what Rashi said, that the spies that Moses sent into the land of Israel, when they went in, they were kasherim. What is kasherim? The word kasherim, kosher, is, it doesn't say that they were tzaddikim, they were holy, they were righteous, it's that they were kosher. Kasherim. Kasherim means that they were, they were fit for the job. They were prepared. The word kosher are the first letters of kamotse shalal rav. Kamotse shalal rav. It's from Psalms. Here. Right? In the, the long, the long psalm of King David, it says that your your Torah, your commandments, is like doing your Torah and the commandments is Kamotse Shalal Rav, is like finding great spoils. Kamotse Shalal Rav. That's what Torah and the commandments are. Doing Torah and the commandments, especially in the land of Israel, is finding great spoils. Motzei shalal. What's shalal? Spoils. Not just riches, spoils. What is spoils? Spoils are taken in war. Spoils of war are things that, first of all, were by the enemy. Vamanagat <clears throat> and the opposition. And nilkach b'milcham, and they were taken by war. It's not you just take the spoils, you find them. What does it mean, find them? Unexpectedly. And this, the spoils are not commensurate at all with the effort that you put in. That's what Metziah means. Shalal Rav, you find great treasures. The Rebu, he got it with such a tremendous abundance. Al Rebu, she'en l'may l'mimeno to a degree that there's no abundance greater than it. Shalal Rav. That's why it says, Nikra Rav, what does it mean that it's, so what does he say? Going into the land of Israel, it says that they were kosher. What does it mean, kosher? When they went in, they did something, there was kosher. What was kosher? Kamotzi shalal rav. It was like finding unexpectedly shalal spoils rav a tremendous abundance that they would never dream of. That they would never dream of. By conquering the enemy, <clears throat> in this case, the enemy is the physical world. By entering the land of Israel, as they found a treasure of godliness, spiritual and spirituality, blessing that was infinite. It was a surprise to them. They opened up the door to this tremendous blessing, which is called the land of Israel. This is the hint that, but it says, that the purpose of their Mission to come to Israel, to spy out the land of the land, to spy out the land of Israel, and to, as a beginning of conquering the land of Israel. <clears throat> and they went in in the way of joy and hate and happiness and certainty. This is biru ratachton. Namely, this is refining the physical world, kamotza shalal rav, like finding great spoils of war. Great spoils of war. That's the first levels of kosher. It says the spies were kosher. They prepared the world for revealing the true godliness in the world. You know, there's this thing, the Rebbe spoke about it, atomic power. Atomic power is that basically they take uh, the power which is concealed in the physical world 
and the atoms, whatever it is, and they release this power. Who would dream that you take two blocks of whatever is uranium, I don't know what they take, plutonium, something. You take, it's just two blocks of, of thing. They weigh how much, I don't know, 100 pounds, 50 pounds, whatever it weighs. And it's enough to destroy a whole city. <laughs> or on the other hand, it's enough to bring light to a whole city for a year, two years. I'm, I'm no expert in, in, in nuclear power, as you can see, but you know they have these nuclear plants that they have a, whatever small amount of, of, of um, material and it makes a tremendous amount of good. Who would dream that there was so much power concealed in a physical block of something? You know, this, it happens to be radioactive matter, but it's, it's just physical matter. And this is just a hint that the good, which is concealed in every detail of the world, when used properly, according to the Torah. And that's the whole thing. That's what uh, the land of Israel is called, why it's called the holy land. It seems to be two opposites. Land is something mundane, right? The mundo means world, as far as I know. The most mundane thing you can have is the earth, the land. You have a holy land. What about a holy land? Everybody's walking on it. Don't walk on the ground. It's holy. What, <laughs> what does it mean? Right? You come into Israel, you don't have to take off your shoes. You can walk on the ground. You can build things on the ground. What type of a holy thing is that? So the Rebbe says that's exactly the point. The land of Israel brings holiness to the world and eventually shows that the whole world can be filled with holiness. But the land of Israel is the beginner. It's a holy land. And the beginning of the holiness in the holy land is the holy temple. But who opened this whole thing? These scouts that Moses sent in. They were the first ones. Kamotzi Shalal Rav. They took a tremendous spoils. Namely, they revealed the godliness which is in the hands of the enemy in the physical world. Shezui Kalala Savoda. This is the whole general service of the Jewish people and really of everyone in the world. That we should conquer the world, not the world should not conquer us. That's step number one. And that we should, yes, conquer the world. What do you mean, conquer the world? Use the world for what God wants in order to make a dwelling place for God. That the world becomes meaningful. Then it comes, then we can really have this thing of finding great spoils. In order that we will control this feeling of separateness from God. And transform the whole entire world to a positive, healthy, productive, blessed, harmonious, peaceful place. Shiyayar or Hashem that it will shine the light of God in the darkness and the sitra achra and this what's called the other side of this physical world with more power than even in the heavens. That's what's called, there's a better type of light that comes from the darkness. So in, in general, we can say that there's two ways of doing this. That's the whole idea of ent- the Jews entering the land of Israel to reveal the holiness of the land and from that to reveal the holiness in the whole world. And again, what is holiness? Holiness is simply revealing the creator in his every aspect of his creation. That the individual, individ, the, the uniqueness and the individual potential in every detail and every human being will be revealed in this physical world. There's two ways of doing this. If you want to call it two steps. And that's indicated by sending these scouts or spies in the land of Israel. The way that Moses did it and the way that Joshua did it. How we can refine the world. Now let's take this to heart. There's 12 people, each one to a different tribe. And there is the spies of Joshua, two people. We're going to, the Rebbe is going to say there's a general way and a detailed way. Let's just do one more paragraph and that's it. First of all, let's understand why Moses had to send 12 people, each person for one tribe. 
We said before that each tribe would be able to see his portion in the land of Israel. Right, from, from the blessings that they got from Jacob. So a lot of the tribes, they knew generally where their place was going to be. But nevertheless, they all went together and they saw the whole land of Israel so that everybody knew how good was their portion and the whole land in general. Why 12? The fee, because Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel is divided into 12 different portions, corresponding to the 12 tribes of Israel. I share that each and every tribe has his own path. She call Shavit that in each and every tribe of the Jewish people, which correspond to the 12 sons of Jacob, right? But now there are many more, right? There's 600,000 divided into 12. Not, not exactly, but so in each and every tribe, each and every tribe of the Jewish people, right? Reuven, Shimon, Yehuda, there as it's own, we'll talk about Levi later has its way of serving, special way of serving God. For instance, the Jewish people, Yisachar and Zebulun, says Yisachar, they mostly sit and learn Torah. And Zebulun, he's better at doing business. There's people who learn Torah, there's people who do good deeds. Similarly, it also is in all the other tribes, each and every one of the tribes is different. Different, everybody's personality is different, everybody's face is different. So according to this, there is also one portion from all the 12 portions, which is relevant to that particular tribe. In other words, there's 12 different tribes, 12 different, so to speak, personalities and ways to serve God. Some more on Torah, some people are more in prayer, some people on good deeds. And the land of Israel is, met, is divided according to this, right? Accordingly, it's, it's a portion to 12. So each portion of the land of Israel fits exactly the personality, general personality of that tribe. Of course, every human being is different. But, but Sirup, when you join all the 12 together, Yachad Shifte Yisrael, when you refine all the 12 portions of the land of Israel, so this will refine the whole entire land. All the details of his Chalko Shabo Kalalim Called Pratim is Chalkoshab Eretz Yisrael Alazua Tachtona, that all the 12 divisions, which each one contains a unique way of serving God, went, the, the idea is, is that each one of them will refine his part of the land of Israel so that it'll be one unit. And then from that will come the whole world. Kala Olam Kulo Nivra Bishvil Yisrael. The whole world was created only for the Jews. What does it mean for the Jews? For the Jews to refine the world. Cavens and Sha'irit, the Jewish people are what we call public servants. The public was only created so that the Jews would be able to, to serve and to improve the whole world. Cave and Sha'irit Israel, because the land of Israel, it includes in it all of the other lands. So if so, Surah Lahavin, we have to understand that each one of the 12 tribes of the Jewish people, they went and, and each one of the, the, the 12 scouts went together with all the other 11 and they surveyed the whole land of Israel. Like I said before, it wasn't just that each one went to his own area, especially because it was known for many of the tribes, was known because from the blessings of Yaakov generally where their land was going to be. Where it would be on the south, would be near the sea. But all of them went together, so it ended up that each one of the tribes saw all the other lands as well, not just his own land. At first glance, since the service of this tribe was, <clears throat> if, if Moses already divided them up into 12, so it means that each one, his job was mainly to come back and report to his tribe and to see his portion of land. What was the necessity of the, all of them going all together and each one saw the other 11 as well? What's the whole purpose? 
So the Rebbe says, simply we can say that each and every one of these scouts <clears throat> was the head of a tribe, but his job was to survey not just his area, but to survey the whole entire land of Israel, also the portions of the other, because there's a commandment, you must love your neighbor as yourself. And all of the Jewish people are like one big unit. They're all mixed, like one big body. The fact is the whole world is a big body, but it comes from the Jewish people. That the Jewish people are like one big body, or in a deeper way, that by means of unifying all of the tribes of the Jewish people, which is stressed by the fact that each one of these leaders of the tribe, the scouts, each scout, each scout went and, and surveyed the whole entire land of Israel, not just his portion. This Nasepiru, the this Nasebula, this caused that there was a refinement of Haoritz, the land of Israel, in the highest possible way. Not just that each one dealt with his own portion, but each one helped the others also refine their portion. Lioto Mitzad Eretz Israel Darga Naili Bi Israel Shalomayla Mishalkos, that then made the Jewish people one nation. True, there were 12, but there's harmony when you have diversity unified together. That's the highest level of unity that there can be. If you just have one person, so that certainly is unity. But if you have 12 that are all doing the same thing, this is above any sort of division whatsoever. Like we're going to learn. So by taking Moses could have just sent one person in or two people in, and they would come back with a, with a report. But he sent 12 people in, and each one was different. Each one represented a different tribe to show that all of these 12 tribes, their purpose was one, to refine the land of Israel, reveal the godliness of Israel, and through that to refine the whole world. But therefore, the more it's like having an, an orchestra, a, uh, what is it, a three-part orchestra, a th what is it, three people playing a song, and you have a hundred people playing a song, right? There's more harmony and more beauty the bigger the orchestra is, and they're all playing the same thing together. Here, that's the number 12 represents in one way the ultimate level of division. And by unifying them, it makes the ultimate level of unity, as we're going to talk about more, God willing, tomorrow. We're going to see how this is really relevant in our personal lives. Kane. Raga. Rock, Raga, Rock, Raga. At first, this is the Yom Yom, right? Sayings of the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe that were compiled by the Lubavitcher Rebbe, seventh Lubavitcher Rebbe. At first, the Alter Rebbe, the first. Rebbe of Chabad, the one that we're reading in the morning, the uh, from Lakuti Torah, he would deliver very short sayings that aroused a tremendous um, storm in the listener's heart. They were very uh, inspiring, and he greatly inflamed the emotions of his Hasidic. These were these were called durachim. Later, he. He extended them more, and they were called. He was a little more. Uh, he explained a little more, and they were called igrot. He would speak like a like a sort of a you know one page letter. But then after that, he said torot. Torot. This is mainly after he was imprisoned. And this would form the basis of what was called the, of all the maimorim of all the long discourses that we're learning in in our classes here in Torah or in Lakuti Torah. Later came what was called Ketavim. And these were expositions with very long and broad intellectual elaboration. So the Alter Rebbe little by little expanded 
and expanded the his elucidation, his speaking, his understanding, his explanations, I'm sorry, his explanations of his ideas, which basically his ideas were just really building on the ideas of the Baal Shem Tov, Hasidic ideas of God's oneness and how to bring Mashiach and reveal this oneness in the whole world. Have a good day with Mashiach. Now, God willing, at three o'clock, we're learning again. Thank you all for coming. Hope to see you. Yeah.